And I believe today our testimony is going to be restored. Can somebody say amen? Say, my testimony is going to be restored. See, God can do anything with our faith. Amen. No, we're not going to go repeating everything that I'm going to say, but you can take notes today for the glory of God. Whatever sin can do, Satan can do. And whatever faith can do, God can do. And if we reach out with our faith, God will meet us at the point of our need. Amen. Our situation does not embarrass Jesus Christ because he has a solution. I'm going to share a brief message with you today. And if you have your Bible, would you go together with me to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 5. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembly of congregations shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put on the doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat of the flesh that night roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain till the morning. Anything that remains till the morning you shall burn. In this matter you shall eat it. With your belt fastened and your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste. This is the Lord's Passover. I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood that shall be on the sign, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Somebody say, pass over. Somebody say, pass over. And no plague shall befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say pass over. This morning I want to speak to you briefly on the topic memorial to miracles. Memorial to miracles. Let's just say this quick prayer out loud after me. Say Lord Jesus open my heart to your word. Lord Jesus open my heart to your spirit and Lord Jesus open my heart to your faith once again we want to welcome everybody who is watching and everybody who is here today we are going to have a fantastic time we already are having a wonderful time in the presence of God as we are going to be anticipating prayer with the anointing water we welcome all those who came from far and near to be prayed with the anointing water and for those of us who are living in Tri-Cities and those of you who are visiting our church for the first time the story that I've read to you is not strange to many of us it comes from the book of Exodus which is the second book in the Bible and it's a story of how God told Israelites to prepare for the last plague which was to destroy the land of Egypt Egypt has punished Israelites unjustly by killing their babies and God came to is to Egypt first time through Moses and said you took my son I will take yours it was very brutal and we must understand karma does work what you sow you will reap and Israel has been suffering from the hand of Egyptians and now the God is going to come and give them vengeance and God will step in and give justice for them the best justice is when God the judge of all the universe steps in in your case can somebody say amen Egypt ripped them off and they withheld their wages and we know that God stepped in at the end and he returned all the wages back to the slaves and collapsed the economy of Egypt in a matter of few months anybody who rips other people's off to make themselves wealthy very soon will find themselves in the same situation as Egypt did completely financially collapsed and anybody who's been ripped off if God is on your side your God is going to make things come back to you sevenfold and you will not walk out from your situation the same that you walked in and you will not walk out empty-handed because your God is Jehovah Jireh can somebody say amen, amen. this is the story that we read is when God told Israelites to prepare for the last plague by taking a lamb and killing this lamb it had to be one year old male it had to be not a baby and not a very old 
in prime of his age in a very youthful very young very strong God said it had to be without blemish and without spot it's very interesting this week and I was reading this portion of the scripture and I'm reading a Bible reading plan which gives me Old Testament and New Testament combined and it was so interesting that as I was reading in Exodus chapter 12 about the lamb who was to be slain for the redemption it somehow happened that I came across in my Bible reading plan at the same time reading in Matthew chapter 26 where Jesus was being led to the cross it just literally I had I had goosebumps when I was reading the Bible because the resemblance was so unique how the lamb here had to be a male and how I read Jesus you know he was also the male how I read the lamb here he had to be you know one years old he couldn't be a baby lamb he had to be already somewhat grown and I go and I see Jesus who dies not at age of 80 at the age of 60 but at the prime of his age I read how the lamb had to be spotless and without wrinkles means he couldn't have a broken rib he couldn't have a broken leg and he couldn't be colorblind he couldn't be any defect there could be no defect in him he had to be completely the best and I read about Jesus he, he was spotless how I know he was spotless the very pilot a Roman man said to the Pharisees I find no fault in him the very man who betrayed Jesus Judas brought 30 shackles and throw them on the ground and said I've betrayed innocent blood Jesus's innocence was not only testified by the father it was testified by his most cruel betrayers a spotless lamb the one that John the Baptist called Jesus this is the lamb of God that's coming I read in Exodus where the lamb had to be slain and roasted in fire and then we go into Matthew and we see Jesus he had to be killed because the wrath the fire of the wrath of God has to roast him and literally burn him and kill him I read that in here the bones of the lamb were not allowed to be broken and then we read about Jesus how his bones had to be left unbroken how they broke the bones of other criminals but they left his bones unbroken I continue to read and I see that in here that the flesh had to be eaten of the lamb and we see that Jesus says eat my flesh and drink my blood that Jesus doesn't want us to only look at him he wants us to feed of him feast of him and to live of him I read in Exodus chapter 12 that the blood of the lamb had to be drained in the basin and you had to take these herbs hyssop a special plant that grows there in Egypt and you had to take the hyssop and dip the blood of the lamb and not just put somewhere on the floor but you had to go put on a high place called the doorposts and also a place that's visible to everybody I read in the New Testament how the blood of Jesus I take my hyssop called my faith and I dip the blood from 2,000 years ago and I am not gonna Bible says not to trample on the blood of Jesus Christ but we put it over the doorposts of our hearts means we make public confession of our inner faith our faith is not private our faith also goes public when we trust in Jesus Christ I go on and I see the fact that the firstborn who were spared on that crazy night were the firstborn that God required the next day and said the firstborn who were spared I want them now to belong to me I want them to be consecrated to me it's as though you didn't die in Egypt but you're not gonna ever live to yourself no more salvation and redemption is not when God delivers you from something it's not just when God removes the bad devil and lets you the freedom to do whatever the heck you want deliverance and freedom is when God replaces the devil by being the supreme in your life not just kicking the devil out so you can do whatever you want kicking the devil out so you can do what God wants can somebody say amen can somebody say hallelujah the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom it's interesting it doesn't say where the demon is gone there is freedom 
most of us define freedom by the absence of the devil God defines freedom by his presence in your life that means you can have a demon out of your life and still not be free real freedom is not when you're spared for them from the plague real freedom is when your life is consecrated to God and you said the plague missed me so that I can fully and completely utterly belong to Jesus Christ Real freedom is not when a donkey is loosed from its chains. It's when Jesus is using the donkey to shake the city. That is real freedom. And when you know that freedom, some of you maybe not want to be free. Because everybody wants to be free so they can no longer have the urges to smoke. Some people want to be free so they can be free to do what they want to do. But when you realize real freedom is free to do what God wants you to do, you're no longer the boss. The God of the universe takes the place of your sin and your master and he begins to rule and reign in your life for his glory. Amen. The amazing part in this story is not only all of these wonderful small ingredients in this redemption story but in the last day on this last plague unlike other plagues where God came into Egypt and many times because Israelites were in Goshen and because they were God's people God caused certain plagues not to touch them. For example, the plague that brought darkness, thick darkness for three days. It didn't touch the Israelites just because they were in Goshen. Just because they were Israelites. A lot of other plagues did not touch Israel just because they were Israelites and because they lived in the right place. I know I've been a Christian for a while now and I've realized there's many things that will miss you if you are in the right place. If you are with the people of God there are many plagues that will just pass you by and then other people unfortunately they will not pass them by if you are just in the right place but the last plague God warned Israelites and he said this plague is not going to miss you because you are in Goshen this plague is not going to miss you because you're descendants of Abraham and this plague is not going to miss you because you have a Jewish blood flowing in your veins this plague will only miss you under one condition if you take the lamb and you slaughter it in your house an innocent lamb and you take of its blood and you go ahead and put over the doorposts of your house and at night death is going to pass Jerusalem and this is going to be the time where death is not going to miss Goshen it's not going to miss the homes of Jewish deist people who worship one God it's going to hit every single street every single zip code every single county it's going to hit every single intersection and actually it will come into every single house and God told Israelites your only way to escape death coming to your house is you have to put blood over your house you can't stop death from coming into Egypt you can't stop death from coming into neighborhood. You can't stop death to coming into your zip code. But you can stop death from coming into your own house. Because of the blood of an innocent lamb. I want to tell you something today. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we have the privilege and the opportunity for the demonic spirits that are traveling in our region today for demonic spirits of death, sickness, poverty, disappointment and depression that are so rampant in this world today. We can't stop them from coming into our region but we can stop them from coming into our home. We can stop them from coming into our physical body and we can stop them from coming into our family tree because of the blood of Jesus Christ. The word Passover is a holiday in the Jewish hist in the Jewish calendar. The word Passover for many people is a doctrine. For many people it's a past event that did great things for Israelites. But for Israel word Passover meant this. Death comes to the house and it passes you over and it goes on. I believe Passover is not something that happened once, it happens every single time where the Spirit of God moves. Demons, curses, sicknesses and all kinds of calamities that are caused by the devil. When the Spirit of God comes, when the blood of Jesus Christ comes, these things have to pass over. 
Maybe they hit your mom, maybe they hit your dad, but because of Jesus, they have to pass over your family. Maybe they hit your neighbors and maybe they hit everybody in your class when you went to high school. But because of the blood of Jesus, I declare pass over. Pass over my family, pass over my finances, to pass over my health, to pass over my future, to pass over my mind, to pass over every area of my life. Somebody shout pass over. Somebody say pass over. To every demon of depression shout pass over. Every sickness say pass over. Every poverty say pass over. Pass over. God says I will pass through but for you it will be pass over pass over somebody say pass over we believe this morning for the people who will be receiving prayer God is going to cause the things that have come into your house to pass over a wonderful lady who shared about asthma asthma passed over two years ago a lady who came here who had a colon cancer she was diagnosed for already carried colon cancer for a few years and those of you who know people with colon cancer, colon cancer kills. But after receiving prayer, when the blood of Jesus Christ was applied, colon cancer passed over. A young man who came in the beginning of last year from Washington DC who had setbacks and disappointments with his papers and could not get a breakthrough and was delivered here and that setback passed over and he received a wonderful blessing from God. Somebody say Passover. Passover. Amen. Passover is when bad things pass over you and good things pass through you and they come into your life. Israel leaves Egypt and the night that they experienced this great Passover. God not only tells them that their great miracle is happening. He tells them that I want you to make a holiday out of this miracle. God says I want you actually to start your calendar from this miracle. I want you to start as a nation to make a statue for generations yet unborn. And I want you to implant in your memory as a memorial what I did. Many days after, after now deliverance from Egypt will be forgotten. The emotion attached to it is going to fade away. The circumstances will be quickly forgotten. Generations after this will not even know how Egypt smells, looks or even nothing about Egypt and I want you to do this for the rest of the generations as a statue. I want you to know one thing today. God wants us to make his miracles a memorial in our mind for many reasons we all sinners here and most of us have already monuments of our mistakes in our minds when we make a mistake and even when we get forgiven of it a mistake a fault a sin even when it's washed by the blood many times it remains in your mind as a monument it becomes a point of reference anything bad that goes in your life and you quickly remember that mistake. God knows it's a human tendency when we are going through a trial to quickly remember the things we did not do instead of things God has done. And God forces a nation to make what he has done a national holiday for a memorial in their memory. Disciples of Jesus are going on a boat and the Bible says that they have no bread and Jesus looks at them and says be aware of leaven of Pharisees and Sadducees and all of those people and disciples of Jesus are looking amongst one another. Peter looks at John and says John I told you take the bread and John looks at Peter and says dude I completely forgot and the other uh, Th Thomas looks at them and says guys you're always forgetful and they're, cuss they're just simply just discussing just hitting one another and Jesus says guys stop. Why is that you're constantly remembering? What you didn't do. He says, do you remember when there was a big crowd and you only had five loaves and two fish? What did I do? He says, do you remember the other time when there was this many people and what I do? And Jesus reminds them, he says, in every incident, in everything that you go through life, I want you to build memorials in your mind of what I've done or you will build monuments of what you did not do. Most of us, we remember things we should forget and forget things we should remember. 
for most of us for our faith to be great we just need to have a better memory if your memory is a little bit better your faith will be great how did David conquer Goliath by having a good memory he faced the Goliath and prophet Samuel wasn't there to say David you are the man of the hour the voice from heaven did not did not come and say this is my anointed man of God everybody Goliath get ready your head is about to leave your shoulders one two three go there was no voice nowhere in Torah God said David is going to be the man and David went to other people and say what do you guys think and they say you, you stupid you he went to Saul so if you're looking for encouragement from other people imagine you facing there and God is not speaking prophet is not encouraging and people who are supposed to you know pep talk you they're there and they're saying you're out of your mind what do you do where do you get faith to face your biggest challenge when your mind is filled with memorials of what God has done what you do is you turn on your memory and see if David would have been like us he would have only remembered how he would fell asleep and the sheep was taken by a lion if he would have been like me he would have remembered how he probably was distracted by singing a new song and the bear came and attacked and took another sheep but David wasn't like me and was not like you he did not build monuments of his mistakes he built memorials of God's miracles and when the test came he simply looked back in his archive in his backyard and says if God did it then God did it here God did it here he will do it now and he will do it here and this is that he said that is enough for me that is enough for me most of you know that during the test the teacher is silent if you are taking an exam it is very foolish to begin to make noise you actually can get kicked out of an exam by making noise during an exam what you have to do is you have to be silent the very teacher that stands in front of you that was speaking so exuberantly and so powerfully just few days before goes numb and you can come to the conclusion that she lost her voice you can come to the conclusion she for no reason hates you in her gut you can come to the conclusion that she doesn't love you or you can realize that she is there testing you and making you remember what she taught you before you got the test every test is just a test of your memory will you remember what God has done before you hit the season and God will be right there in your boat many times but he will be completely silent because he wants you to build memorial of what he has done in your past instead of monuments of what you did not do in your past maybe you've fallen maybe you've lied you've cheated you've stolen let this not be a memorial in your head let what God has done be a memorial in your mind because in the moment of a test in the moment of a trial in the moment of a sickness a seeming delay in the moment of a bankruptcy in the moment of an attack and you know God is not speaking but you you bow your head and you remember how God helped you how God seen you through you replay the memories of your past victories and miracles something happens to your faith at that moment it begins to grow and the biggest challenge you're facing in front of you you step in with a great faith a young man with a great faith and no great encouragement but only encouragement from the memorial of the previous miracles build a memorial of a miracle in your mind build a memorial of the miracle in your mind and you will not be tempted to build a monument of your mistakes in your head one teacher I watched the testimony this week of one teacher who prior to this incident that happened that it became a national news and most of you have seen this footage on the news last year her husband whom she met at the age of 13 whom she been married to for 23 years but she knew him for 33 years he decided to leave her for another woman she had two children one of her sons was diagnosed with some weird sickness that did not allow him to walk freely and he had to be on a wheelchair her life was spinning out of the control she was a very devout Christian every single day and 
in the morning and in the evening she had her time with God and God really helped her get through all of the bitterness and all of the unforgiveness and all of the disappointments at this particular day she gets a call and in the phone call the, the company that she leased the car from or she borrowed the car from uh, got the loan they asked her they told her actually that you have till the end of the day to pay back the fifteen thousand dollars for your car or your car will get repossessed so she closed the office she worked in a school and she just started bawling and crying and really saying God please help me because you know I got through the betrayal of 23 years I'm okay with you know my son being in the wheelchair I got through that you really helped me but I really need to get through this thing they're gonna take my car away and she is crying a man walks in a young man walks in with AK-47 and had 500 for 500 rounds of ammunition he had it in his bag and he faced the right at her and said that today you and I and many other people in this school are going to die well she quickly forgot about her car <laughs> when you're faced with the AK-47 and 500 rounds of ammunition all your problems go away and she realized she's gonna die today but she talked to God that morning and she begins to talk with him the talk continues they ev evacuate most of the school but still there's quite a few teachers that he I guess puts them all in one room and this guy is just literally he is really broken and because she's been broken through so many things herself she could relate with him and he doesn't shoot her first and she begins to talk with him and talk with him and talk with him and next thing that happens she talks him into letting go of all the teachers she's the only one remaining with him and he looks at her and he says okay you know what you you're right you you got me you really know how to talk and you talked me out of my plan of killing 800 students and 100 teachers but it's going to be you and me i'm going to shoot you and then i'm going to shoot myself and she looked at him and she said i am going to die and you are going to die but it's not going to happen today she continued to talk to him what happened next is this young man whose name is Michael lays his AK-47 on the floor lays prostrate right in front of her puts her hands behind his back and tells her to invite the police the police came and arrested him they put him in prison they put him in jail she walked out and everybody all the news media she was she literally she was an overnight sensation every news outlet had her face how brave she was you must understand this particular school had a shooting prior to this it didn't end like that I am not aware of one shooting where the shooter did not kill no one laid on the floor laid his AK-47 and 500 rounds of ammunition on the side and surrendered for no reason to the police she wrote a book called prepared for a purpose on her interview this is what she said everything I went through was a preparation for the day I will meet with the man who will claim to take 800 students and his own life and I will stop him from killing them myself and himself she no longer works in school she's a bestseller author prolific uh, speaker all around the world has her own nonprofit corporation and if you will look at her today completely unrecognizable how did she overcome that incident in the office with the gun in her face it's because this is what she said what I went through I remembered how faithful God was when my husband was not faithful she says, I remember how God was faithful even when my son was sick. And she says, instead of building offenses against God, she says, in all of that, I got through it and I built memorials out of the same situations other people would have built monuments. And when my biggest problem came in the office, instead of giving up and says, oh my God, I'm going to die. She says, I realized this is my Goliath and I will kill him with the memories of my previous victories.
Israel could have had a holiday remembering 400 years of slavery but God says I want you to remember a night of deliverance don't build monuments of your slavery build memorials of my miracles in every miracle there is your mistake in every miracle there is a reason why you should be offended why God didn't come in which required a miracle but God says I want you to press delete to your monument of mistakes and establish a memorial to my miracles so when a time comes in and you don't have faith when a time comes in and everything is falling apart you don't have to cry out you just have to remember and act Jesus faced his disciples on the supper last supper and he says do this in remembrance of me remember this remember this it's interesting he never told them to remember that Peter had an anger problem John had an outburst of wrath he told them remember this I choose to remember what God has done and I choose to forget what I have not would you agree with me today in Jesus name but the most amazing part is the fact what Israel did not know as they every year remember the Passover they remember the past it never entered into their mind that they are gonna have something even better than what they are remembering in the past the whole idea of God asking them to remember their past is not only so they could have faith for their present but because the real lamb is actually coming it's as though the great thing that happened in Egypt was just a shadow of what's about to happen on the Calvary it's as though whatever happened that you think is great is just a shadow of what God still wants to do in the future and it's as though God is saying remember it not only so it could help you get through things but remember it so it can help you to know this is just a shadow of what God is going to do in the future Jesus said same thing he says remember the cross until we eat that in heaven guys God has given us wonderful miracles so many I remember how this building was purchased when we had no papers when we spoke no English and when our church was not registered this was so amazing because this was just a year of our church existence in the United States not just as a church but everybody in our church existed for one year there was no way we could have had a building we did not have the money we did not have the funds we did not have anything this is such a crazy miracle because now 10 years later when we try to refinance this building with papers with money we still did not qualify we did not qualify and we have rents here and we have finances and we did not qualify for refinancing yet 10 years ago this building was given to us without anything it's just a shadow and God wants us to remember that not so just to keep us happy and joyful but to keep us expecting it's just a shadow a lamp here is a symbol of the lamp that's coming right there and he's far better than the lamp that's right here the healing of asthma, the healing of cancer and the deliverance from that demon and deliverance of that demon. To me today when I read the scripture this week what is shouted in my mind is God says remember my miracles. Why? Because they're just a deposit of what's really I want to do in your life. I take that by faith in Jesus name. If God did it for Israel he's gonna do it for you, he's gonna do it for me and he's gonna do it for all of us today in Jesus mighty name. What you've seen in your life is just the beginning. What is coming is gonna be greater than what you've seen. Can somebody say amen? I mean even Jesus, you would think Jesus such a great miracles. He looks at his disciples and he didn't tell them say guys what I did nobody can top it off. This is going to go in history as the best and everybody is going to try to measure themselves to me. He says, guys, what I do, greater, you will do. He said, I'm just a shadow. What you're going to do is so much better than what I've done. I'm just a beginning. What you're going to do is greater. I prophesy today over this place 
the best is yet to come I speak today over our church I speak over your destiny today what you've seen and what you've been through don't build monuments of God's inactivity build memorials of his miracles because they will not only help you get through but they will help you to get to God's best in your life can somebody say hallelujah amen when I remember what God has done it doesn't just help me to get through it helps me to get to the best that God has for me and somebody say out loud after me say when I remember what God has done it helps me to get through to the better things in my life say out loud after me say the best is yet to come say the greater things are in my future and my future starts now say my future starts now amen 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 we're gonna take a moment right now and just honor the name of our God for this wonderful promise we're gonna take a moment right now and glorify God and trust that today God is gonna take us out from the situation we are in for his glory amen